Ashwin, thank you very much. As we are waiting for others, uh, let me uh, just uh, give a background uh, why we are doing this session. And I thank all of you for taking interest and joining. Uh, you all are uh, from the shipping industry. We all very well know about various regulations, conventions, protocols uh, for safety, environmental protection, passengers, crew, cargo, cab, etc. Uh, in the recent past, last couple of years, it has been very bad for the container shipping industry, mostly because of uh, uh, cargo involving dangerous goods, mostly misdeclared or undeclared, even certain declared correctly also, which resulted in last large fires, explosion uh, on board ships, including loss of lives and uh, property worth billions of dollars, uh, which will also result in environmental pollution to the, at the sea. And uh, one, uh, we did uh, many webinars uh, in this year. This year is very bad and terrible for all of us because of COVID pandemic. Uh, not only for uh, those uh, suffered from the COVID and lost their lives, uh, let's pray for them. And uh, all others are also affected by this pandemic uh, due to you know reduced economic activities, job losses, reduced trade, etc. But one, uh, every bad opportunity also throws up certain good things. One of the good things, uh, I should not say good thing, but still a positive thing is uh, many of us uh, started working online, more online, remote works, coordinating uh, through online web meetings, etc. So this year, many organizations and individuals have uh, conducted various webinars for awareness and hundreds of people are joining. So this is one of the good way post COVID also for all of us to come on a same platform and interact and share our experiences and knowledges, knowledge uh, in uh, various aspects to improve our trade practices and uh, most importantly, safety. Uh, let's talk about the CTU code. Uh, many of you are aware about, well aware about CTU code. Some of us are not aware. Uh, let's see what is CTU code. Uh, city code is for the cargo transport units. Uh, cargo transport unit can be a freight container, a flat track container, a reefer container, a road vehicle, rail wagon, etc. Uh, these days we get almost everything, whatever we buy from the shops, uh, supermarkets and malls, everything comes in containers. Containers do look very uh, safe, secure once we place the cargo inside. But these boxes can also cause damages to certain cargoes depending on the type of container we use and uh, uh, you know type of cargo, how we are sec uh, securing the cargo inside. Not only the damage to the cargo, damage to the cargo may be only the economic loss, but it can cause damage to uh, the transport vehicle, the ships, the cause hazard to the transport workers. So the agenda of uh, today's webinar is uh, packing of cargo transport unit, very basic. Then uh, uh, CTU code, informative materials related to the CTU code. Uh, what uh, checklists are available with us or uh, which are available in the industry for uh, following that to ensure that the packing of container is in accordance with the applicable rules and regulations. What other guidances are available in the industry and uh, electronic solutions. Uh, for various aspects, including CTU code, as well as uh, dangerous goods transport. Insufficiently secured cargo inside cargo transport unit can result in uh, not only cargo damage, it can also cause damage to the containers, it can cause damage to the vessels, the crew, and other transport workers who are involved. So it is all how good we are in packing and securing the cargo inside the container or cargo transport unit, let's say. How uh, secure we, uh, how good we are in securing the cargo, uh, that depends on the safety of all others involved in the transport chain. Some of the issues uh, what re resulting in the cargo damage or damage to the CTU, maybe only to the cargo damage and damage to the CTU. But these type of incidents, the shifting of the cargo or the cargo coming out of the CTU through the container floor or through the end walls or side walls can also cause grievous injury or even death. 
So there was an instance uh, long back, uh, maybe eight to nine years before, which happened in India on a 40 foot uh, road trailer, which was packed with uh, steel pipes. And when the driver applied sudden brakes, the pipes uh, pierced through the driver's cabin, the windshield, pinning the driver and his assistant, instantly causing, killing both of them. It was a very tragic incident. Uh, why these things are happening? Because, uh, let me change the image because it is not a good image to be put on the screen. Uh, why these things are happening? Because the securing of the cargo was not proper inside the container or on the road trailer, vehicle, whatever is the cargo transport unit. Apart from CTU code, uh, we can just uh, look at the uh, result of the container inspection programs uh, conducted by a couple of countries. Uh, the inspections carried out in 2019 and the report submitted to International Maritime Organization in uh, 2020. Uh, this is very, very, very small percentage of uh, in, uh, number of containers being transported in the transport chain, only 66,000. Um, actually, there are millions of containers being uh, transported uh, per annum. In that 66,000 containers, 4,000 plus containers had various deficiencies including 900 plus having deficiencies in storage and securing of the packages inside the container. Some of them even having serious structural deficiencies, which are actually putting the container out of the CSC convention. Now this we are talking only about dangerous goods boxes that to a very small percentage, which is uh, inspected, uh, which was subject to the random inspection by certain port authorities in certain countries, say six or seven countries very, very small percentage. What about all other cargoes apart from dangerous goods, which is not inspected, which is inspected, no non-inspected dangerous goods, as well as the huge lion share of non-dangerous and general cargo containers, how well they are secured or whether they are in line with the, uh, you know, uh, acceptable practices for securing cargo. So in statistics put out by uh, TT club, uh, analysis by TT Club says 65% of the damages to the cargo results from poorly packed containers, especially freight containers. So almost uh, entire damages of the cargo, 65% of the lion's share is going to the poorly packed containers. Uh, the reason is poorly packed, poorly packed or poorly secured uh, goods inside the container. So here comes the importance of CTU code as the guidelines for the packers and all others involved in packing of the container or freight container or any type of cargo transport unit, uh, how to secure the cargo. The primary importance is always for the safety of life of the transport workers and all others coming in contact with that. Then comes the environmental protection. Then later, the third only comes the financial consequences. What is inside the box and how well the goods are secured inside? Uh, the packer who is uh, the who is responsible for packing of goods into the container, he or she may be the last person who will see how the goods are properly secured or not, uh, whether the gaps are filled in, whether it is properly choked, blocked, braids, etc. So it all depends upon the packer's skill. All others in the transport chain depends on the packer's skill for their safety as well as for the protection of the cargo. So safety of anyone in the transport chain, like uh, drivers, rail workers, uh, crew on the vessels, crew and officers on the vessels, uh, the terminal port staff, inspectors, custom officers, anyone who comes in contact with the container, uh, I'm using the term container for this uh, CTU. They all, dip, all their safety depends on the packer skill, how skilled the packer is, how the container is packed. What is, uh, when we say CTU, CTU can be any type of cargo transport unit. It can be a freight container, it can be a road vehicle, it can be a railway wagon, it can be a flat track container or open top, hard top, fabric side, anything. All of them are cargo transport units. And CTU code gives certain guidelines how to secure the cargo, different types of cargo, with irregular shapes, steel pipes, steel coils, uh, fiberboard boxes like cartons, bags, uh, incompatible cargo, order emitting cargo, all these type of things. C 
CT code is published in 2014. It is uh, jointly published by International Maritime Organization, International Labor Organization and uh, Economic Commission for Europe and the United Nations. This is a non-mandatory global code for handling and packing of cargo transport unit. Now, when it comes to non-mandate, when it, uh, it is non-mandatory, many people think that, okay, it is non-mandatory, let us not look into that and spend our time more on that. But it is not non, it is a non-mandatory thing, but it is very, very important for securing of goods into different, different types of goods into freight containers, CTU. This was originally in the supplement of IMDG code, before uh, 2014, it used to be in the supplement of IMDG code as guidelines for packing of cargo transport unit. So I think since 1997 till 2012 edition of IMDG code, if I am correct. But as the trade and the industry evolved and progressed uh, due to new technologies like uh, these flexi tanks, everything came in. Uh, UNEC, United Nations Economic Commission of Europe and IMO and ILO, they revised the guidelines of packing of cargo transport unit and republished that in 2014 as CTU code. It is a guidance not only for those who pack the cargo, but for those who also unpack, receive the container and unpack, that is the consignee who receives the goods. It also addresses certain things on training of the packers and others involved in packing of goods, as well as uh, packing of dangerous goods. There is another uh, publication which is called informative material. Informative material is not the part of CTU code, but it provides a practical guidance, how to secure goods, how to pack the containers, etc. So that is CTU code and informative material. There are various consequences of badly packed uh, containers. Uh, we saw two images where the steel pipes are coming out of a container and also steel pipes on a trailer which cause death of the driver and uh, his assistant. The consequences can be very uh, varying consequences depending on the cargo and CTU and the securing method. Uh, it can result in uh, cargo moving inside the container uh, because of you know improper securing. It can result in damage to the cargo, accidents and injury to the per related personnel. Also, heavy cargoes can break open the end walls, side walls or the floor of the container. If it is unsecured goods, it can even injure the people who open the container door when the cargo is pushing against the door, falling on the head uh, or the body of the people who open the container. Apart from uh, securing the cargo, uh, humidity uh, is uh, one of the big factor which results in cargo damage. Uh, humidity is the moisture content in the air, especially those who are from the tropical climate countries, you all, we all know very well what is uh, humidity and how it can affect. So humid air trapped inside the container, uh, once the container doors are closed and uh, locked, the container moves to a colder climatic uh, region, geographical region with colder climate, the humid air will turn into dew drops and it can uh, cause a, you know, small drizzle inside the container. Containers uh, is a closed box. Uh, it uh, creates its own microclimate inside. Containers looks very safe, secure, like a, you know, nobody can break in, nobody can pilfer the cargo, but the container can also increase or decrease the temperature inside. The, there will be a considerable difference in temperature, outside temperature and inside container, especially during the daytime when it is exposed to sunlight. So all this humidity and condensation damages mostly occur due to climatic variations in during long transit. It can also happen in shorter transit too. Humidity, this condensation damage can result in corrosion to ferrous metals, uh, steel, iron, wet damage to the cargo and growth of mold on uh, perishable cargoes, leather goods, etc. which may result in goods becoming unsaleable. So, CTU code does have a lot of guidance, guidelines and checklists and etc. NXS. So, where the CTU code is applicable? It is applicable for sea and land transport and for all types of uh, cargo transport unit, even for uh, dangerous goods. All these places the CTU code is applicable. 
IMTG code also refers to CTU code uh, whenever the use of container is uh, involved in transportation of dangerous goods. Uh, it is uh, IMDG code refers in the parts of IMDG code where the container is used for transportation of dangerous goods, especially for the those who pack and unpack the containers with dangerous goods. IMDG code refers to CTU code. CTU code as well as IMDG code recommends that whenever dangerous and non-dangerous goods are loaded in the same container, preferably we keep the dangerous goods towards the door end, the labels and marks facing the door. That is for the emergency response people to have quick access in case of any incident. Similarly, solids are recommended to be kept above the liquid and use garnish to separate the tiers when the packages are not designed for nesting against each other. So all these things are given in the CTU code. Uh, IMDG code does not give the graphical examples of packing of container, but that is there in the CTU code, uh, mostly in the uh, uh, CTU code and its NXS. Paratized cargo uh, can also cause damage depending on the, you know, whether we have used the damage between the tiers as well as whether the pack, uh, parrot can withstand the stack load limit. So actually the consigner should first consult with the consignee what equipments the consignee are having for unpacking the goods and discuss with them and decide whether it should be paratized, non paratized whether the stick sheet should be used, etc and make a load plan for the container, then pa pack the container. In this image, you can see uh, plastic drums in three tiers and they are used plywood sheet in between each tier. That is for distributing the load equally. So the bottom tier will not get uh, crushed. Uh, so whichever packages when we are over stacking, uh, if, it, if they are not designed to nest together, uh, it is recommended to use a uh, damage in between for repatriating the weight, weight distribution. Contamination is one of the major concerns across the globe that there are quarantine rules for uh, wood, wood materials, wooden materials, as well as the grains and pulses, etc. So when a shipper receives a clean container, shipper must uh, uh, you know, keep in mind that the container can get recontaminated. So the shipper or the packer must uh, take care that the container is uh, empty container before packing is protected from any probability of the reinfestation, especially by pests, animals, butterflies, spiders, lizards, squirrels, frogs, moths, etc. Uh, Recontamination uh, can be aggravated, especially when there are artificial lights uh, used in the container yards or container freight stations, wherever this packing is the artificial electric lamps will attract flying ins insects when it is on, especially after sunset, which can, uh, you know, increase the probability of the infestation inside the container. CTU code also gives recommendations on what type of electric lamps will in attract more flying insects, as well as what type of lights will attract less flying insects. So it, uh, CTU code, I would recommend that CTU code is one of the uh, best and complete guidelines for anyone using containers and other uh, cargo transport unit, not only for securing the cargo, also for this type of information, how to protect the environment and other elements, including the, you know, pest infestations. Opening of CTU, many a times uh, people have got injured uh, because of the cargo falling out while opening the door because the cargo was not properly secured inside which resulted in cargo pushing against the door and when we open the door it may fall on us which is causing us injury. So the doors uh, should be secured so uh, in, even if the cargo is pushing against the door, door will not open completely causing injury. Observe how the cargo is inside then decide for fully opening the door. Even after opening the door, we must secure the doors in open position while do doing work in the cargo, even while packing of container also. Whenever the door is open, we must keep the door secured so the wind will not bang the door against, uh, causing injury to the personal working. Approach with caution, ventilate before entering. All containers are considered as uh, uh, a what you call hazardous atmosphere. It is a confined space, 
so a single person should never be deployed uh, or you know engaged for working inside a container there must be always more than one person because when you enter the container we must always remember it is a confined atmosphere there may be hazardous uh, gases or lack of oxygen or enriched atmosphere or any other danger can happen so a second person can alert others and get assistance in case if there is an accident or incident containers may contain dangerous vapors from the dangerous goods being carried or residues there within it can have flammable tox or toxic gases or it may be enriched the atmosphere may be enriched with oxygen or depleted with oxygen some of the cargoes will consume oxygen like reducing agents so which will cause reduction of oxygen inside the container anything less than 20% of oxygen is considered as a dangerous atmosphere for human beings living things and uh, some of the cargoes may emit oxygen like hydrogen uh, peroxide will keep evolving oxygen uh, cargoes which can reduce oxygen is uh, like steel any metal which is corroding which will consume oxygen so there may be dangerously low level of oxygen so the people who are approaching the container must observe what are the warning signs displayed on the door of the container uh, like container unit is under fumigation or unit is uh, using expendable refrigerants like uh, dry ice carbon dioxide solid carbon dioxide or whether it is uh, you know filled with uh, liquid inside flexi tank so do not open the left hand side door or if it is having uh, say polymeric beads which require ventilation before entering and no naked lights and no smoking so even if there is no warning signs on the doors of the container uh, the people must the, uh, who are engaged in opening the doors they must observe the container all around uh, check whether there is any increase in the temperature on the surface of the container whether the uh, ventilation holes are duct tapes or what is the description of the cargo whether any probability of container is being fumigated but no warning signs affixed it is all for the safety all these informations and guidance are given in ctu code now when we look at the table of contents of ctu code i have just highlighted uh, certain things from chapter 7 to 11 here uh, it is uh, it is a very useful code you can see from 7 to 11 suitability of the container what type of container for which type of cargo whether you require a ventilated container or a non ventilated container what uh, checks we must do before packing the container how to pack the cargo on completion of packing of container, what to do, etc. CTU code uh, has certain annexes and uh, these annexes are very useful like annex 3 for prevention of condensation damages, annex 7 for packing, annex 9 for fumigation. Uh, even like a fumigated container, how to ventilate a fumigated container, whether by natural ventilation, if it is a 20 or 40 foot container, what must be the you know, time difference will be there for ventilation, natural ventilation, fumigation, uh, degassing doors. Uh, are you able to hear? Somebody said, uh, I am not uh, uh, audible. I hope uh, I am audible. Can somebody type on the chat? Okay, thank you. One of the person uh, could not hear, uh, I do not know, maybe it's some issue. Okay, so these are the uh, uh, information in the NXS. Now, it is not a very difficult code, but still we must be familiarized and we must be trained how to use the code. So CTU code contains a summary of contents table. The, this table will lead us to how to refer the CTU code. So just example, like packing of cargo into uh, cargo transport unit chapter number nine so if you are in the chapter number nine the reference annexes are a7 and a8 and informative materials are im5 6 7 and 8 so uh, these reference uh, summary of the table summary contents table will help us to you know look into the other relevant sections of the ctu code this comes in two books that is ctu code and the informative material informative material is not part of the ctu code but uh, can be used for enhancing the safety Another thing I would like to highlight is due diligence checklist published by uh, 
maritime safety committee of international maritime organization circular number 1531 this due diligence checklist is address all the parties involved in the containerized transport or wherever ctus are used who all are the parties and what is their responsibilities how they can engage with each other how we can verify our uh, vendor or the other party is capable to do capable or qualified or whatever to do the things so there are various entities involved in the containerized transport chain like shipper consigner forwarder packer container operator carrier consignee inspectors all these people so when we look at this uh, this is a 12 or 13 page i think some 7 or 8 pages document when we look at the shipper uh, shippers role in affecting the cult uh, the heading is role in affecting the culture change within the supply chain it says that ensure the staff and all others involved are trained and aware of the use of ctu code and what is the aid assistance ctu code should be available and easily accessible to the staff same thing with the consolidator ctu code should be available and easily accessible to the staff freight forwarder advise the customers uh, for use of ctu code including in the you know booking release uh, message like refer to ctu code or ct ctu code etc ensure customers are informed about the best practices and raise awareness of ctu code so freight forwarders like when if a shipper asks the freight forwarder for any guidance even if the shipper does not ask for the guidance freight forwarder can inform the shipper to follow the ctu code for securing the cargo and selection of the type of containers same thing with the packer the ctu code should be available or easily accessible to the staff container operators again ctu code and of course the csc convention also comes in so container operator also must ensure the customers are informed about the best practices and awareness within the ctu code in general and and ensure the customers responsibilities and liabilities if ctu is returned and damaged so now in this case uh, the customer or the whoever is taking the empty container from the container operator they should also have the knowledge to inspect the container according to csc convention as well as uh, the criteria laid down in the ctu code carrier again advise customers to use ctu code through the booking notes or delivery notes etc and uh, raise the awareness for the best practices in the model operator again ctu code so if you look at all these things different parties everybody is engaged to use the ctu code or refer the ctu code to the other party to uh, follow the instructions i did uh, receive many questions uh, by the attendees who were registering most of the questions are addressed here and i'll be addressing further one of the question was the, you know my registration format do you have a, uh, access to ctu code as the option that was just asking whether you people are having access to ctu code whether it hard copy or soft copy this can be freely downloaded from united nations economic commission website or visit uh, imo.org uh, where you can uh, find the ctu code for downloading ctu code as well as the informative material another question what i got is uh, overview of the latest development in imdg code and how it affects the new situation within the united kingdom i believe this question is about brexit impending brexit i am not very sure how brexit is going to affect the transport industry in uk with the uh, european union and rest of the world but uh, i am very sure department of transport and uh, maritime coast guard agency will ensure that the uh, in uh, local transport within uk and the international transport under imdg code iata adr etc are you know meeting the standards of the international regulations that much only i can uh, reply on this question unfortunately okay now we you understood there is something called ctu code most of you already know that but we understood certain basic aspects of aspects of ctu code and the importance and various entities parties involved in the transport chain almost everybody has a responsibility to look into the ctu code and comply with the ctu code not only for the integrity of the cargo and the protection of the cargo but primarily for the protection of the safety of the transport workers and protection of environment so what everyone must have uh, in the transport chain is 
of course the ctu code informative material and maritime safety committee's uh, due diligence checklist for ctu providers apart from that uh, you can also access ctu code as a wikipedia like page on the united nations economic commission website if anybody do not know where it is you can search in any of the search engines like google or bing ULECE CTU code uh, wiki WIKI. The first result will be the link for this. It is uh, you can click and navigate through the CTU code. Apart from the CTU code, there is an excellent publication which came out uh, a month or two ago, uh, published by Cargo Integrity Group, uh, uh, which got a CTU code a quick guide that is some 14 to 15 pages quick guide, which got these 12 contents and a container packing checklist. Now this container packing checklist, wherever the answer, while packing the container, wherever the answer is no, uh, the person responsible for packing must stop packing and uh, take further action to correct this. So I should, I would this uh, CTU code quick guide and the uh, container packing che checklist, a must, it should be a you know mandatory must document of course it is not legally mandatory but it must be a must document with all those involved in using containers as well as packing and unpacking containers another uh, wonderful guidelines is published by gt club and uk pni that is uh, hook it right and pack it tight uh, you can again uh, you know google it or go to gt club or uk pni's website and download this now this is revised i believe last year this is all about uh, dangerous goods transportation. There are various uh, references on my website also, that is shashikara.com. Here also you can uh, go to the download section and download the container packing checklist or CTU code or due diligence checklist by Maritime uh, Safety Committee. Apart from all these things, there are also availability of uh, different digital tools. Uh, options for digitally processing the dangerous goods loads uh, including production of uh, dangerous goods declaration and uh, there are various uh, uh, e-learning options e-learning options are there for IMDG code for all roles as well as e-learning option for uh, CTU code CTU code training is recommended in the CTU code and when it comes to dangerous goods, IMDG code requires mandatory training for the packers of dangerous goods containers. So therein the IMDG code refers to the CTU code. We have Chris uh, from Axis Technology with us. Uh, I, I request Chris uh, Barker to share his view about the availability of the e-tools and uh, e-learnings. And closing this presentation, I request everyone to hold on wherein Chris will share his presentation uh, that is a short presentation on what is the best tools available, digital tools. Thanks, Sashi. Uh, hello, everybody. Yes. Thanks for having me. Uh, can you yeah. hear me okay? Yes, I can hear you, Chris. You are audible. Yeah, great. Um, so thanks for that, Sashi. Uh, I think it's very informative. I think uh, one of the takeaways from from my side of things, and I'll touch on this in in my presentation, is um, that cost doesn't need to be a barrier to uh, to a lot of this this resource that you're talking about. Um, CTU code, in particular, it's freely available, as you say, as a download. Um, there is a number of free resources available, and I would encourage anybody involved in the supply chain to to have a look at that. And I think it's one of the common uh, complaints. Uh, in, in some cases ab ab about uh, cost of access to some of these um, tools and uh, regulations and I think uh, you know sort of part of what I want to do today is to is to just explain um, <clears throat> sort of our way through the minefield if you like um, and uh, and to see if um, you know there's anything that we can do to help uh, with that uh, we work We've been working in this industry for about 30 years, supplying compliance tools for dangerous goods. Um, and uh, for um, we've work, been working with Sashi for, for, for more than 10 years. Um, so we, we've we got quite a lot of experience and we've got quite a lot of high profile customers who uh, are using our solutions. So I'll, 
I'll dive into the presentation and uh, hopefully uh, it's, it's of use to you guys. Um, so Exis Technologies, uh, we are a, uh, a company based in the UK. Um, a couple of years ago, we were purchased by National Cargo Bureau, which is based in the U United States. Uh, together, we share uh, uh, the same uh, ethos of uh, it's a not-for-profit uh, organisation, and we share the uh, the, the goal of uh, achieving safety of life and cargo at sea. Uh, so, so we 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 kind of completely uh, involved in that. Uh, Sashi mentioned about uh, the number of inspections, the small number relatively of inspections that takes place on cargo uh, worldwide. National Cargo Bureau is the largest in the world um, container inspector um, and they are inspecting more than 40,000 containers per year uh, in, in various locations. Uh, so they, um, you know, it's, 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 they're a very important cog in the wheel and uh, us as Exis Technologies, uh, we've got 30 years experience uh, supporting major shipping lines uh, with their uh, software solutions uh, for identifying dangerous goods. And we're working with nine out of the top 10 container lines in the world. We, um, we supply a number of different uh, things within our organization. We supply uh, training, uh, which I'll talk about uh, today. We supply digital tools, which we've I've uh, been working with Sashi. Sashi uh, will, will supply on our behalf as well. We have some uh, trials for Hascheck Online, which is a validation tool, uh, which I'd encourage anybody to take a look at, and you'd be welcome to do that. I'm sure Sashi will post on his web, web page uh, how you might be able to do that if you're not aware of it already or haven't taken advantage of it. And we do work very closely with uh, IMO uh, and, the, uh, and the IMDG code. We um, we also produce a number of free resources. Uh, Hascheck DGL Lite is a app uh, that we have uh, on uh, Android and iPhone, um, which is a free download. And we supply uh, data sets which are, which are freely available to, uh, to, to anybody to take a look at the risk zone data and coded variant list, which is, uh, which is on our site. Uh, risk zone data is uh, regarding the storage additional rules for storage of, of cargo at, at, uh, at sea and the coded variant list is is to describe uh, the differences between certain uh, different UN numbers uh, so the they're they're, they're, uh, they're free resources that we supply and we supply a number of other free resources as well um, our training uh, is uh, all web-based it's a uh, complete e-learning training solution that we that we offer um, we uh, our customers find this method of course delivery to be uh, consistent scalable and easy to administer uh, candidates find it convenient often uh, extended uh, time frames to complete the training and minimal disruption to their busy work schedules um, with with more members of staff working from home and disruption to traditional training methods, uh, implementation for this type of training can allow for continuous professional development when other training may not be available. Our um, range of IMDG code e-learning uh, training is uh, fully compliant with the IMDG regulations, um, chapter 1.3.1. Uh, uh, it uh, sets out some some rules about what training is required for shoreside staff, and our training is is fully compliant with that. Uh, we always work with the latest amendment of, of the IMDG code for our uh, dangerous goods training, which is currently thirty nine eighteen. I am I am will release amendment forty twenty. Uh, the books should be available in February next year, and the e reader in January next year. Uh, and we will change over at the same time our courses to reflect the new regulations. Um, when uh, when candidates complete the training, uh, the progress is automatically saved and uh, candidates can finish the course in as many sessions as necessary. 
uh, they get up to three months to complete the training. And uh, once candidates achieve the minimum standard of 75% uh, pass rate, then they have they are awarded with a certificate of, of completion. The, uh, the IMDG code mandates that each person shall be trained in the specific dangerous goods transport provisions which are applicable to the function that that person performs. Uh, so depending on what you do in the supply chain of, of the carriage of dangerous goods actually reflects on what training you should receive. And what we do at, at, at Exis is to provide training which is specific to those training needs and identified here some of those roles uh, that we that we cater for within our IMDG code training. Um, so you, you, you might be a consigner or a freight forwarder or a packer, um, cargo handler, chip loader or, or ship operator. So those those courses are tailored to your specific needs. And uh, the training is broadly similar to a face to face training, it, it, you know, which would normally take sort of two to three days. Um, the, the material that we offer within our e-learning e is uh, is a sort of a two to three day training course, uh, although you can take it over a much longer period of course. There are a number of other courses. Um, some people might want a more advanced course, for example, um, dangerous good safety advisors or some experts in their field uh, would, would maybe want advanced. Some people may not touch dangerous goods, just need to be aware of it, so an awareness course. And also uh, IMDG uh, provisions that uh, people who've had training previously can uh, get a refresher on the latest amendment. And uh, we we offer a refresher training that are based on the changes uh, of, uh, of each amendment. Um, just got on this slide here that um, Exis, we also work with a number of different people uh, to offer blended uh, learning solutions so we can offer course materials uh, to people and, and obviously we do work very closely with a number of people including Sashi in order to do that. Uh, Sashi um, has been talking a lot today about uh, CTU code um, and it, it's not mandatory um, but you know also there is training available, uh, specific training available um, Sashi mentioned in in his in the in the material there that uh, people were advised to be trained. Obviously, this can be conducted in house um, with some experts, but those experts may not be available. And uh, so, we've prepared some training uh, which um, will will help with that. Um, is fully certified and can be recorded, and it's part of our training regime. Uh, we we've uh, produced this material in in accordance with. Uh, with TT Club and Ichka, who uh, were two of the parties involved in the development of the of the CTU code, uh, so we, um, you know, it's it's, it's very well um, endorsed uh, by uh, by those by those bodies. Oh, sorry, I, I'm just not sure what you're seeing now. Just. Just let me uh, try again. Yeah, Chris, you can restart the presentation. How is that? Is that better? Yeah, it is better. OK, sorry about that, guys. Um, so in addition to the CTU code training, we also um, work with ITCO for, for tank container e-learning. Um, and this is a, a specific uh, course for anybody who's involved in in, in tank containers. Um, so if there is anybody who's listening today that, that feels that that might be uh, useful, then, uh, then, then I would uh, advise to take a look at that. Um, what we do with our courses is we present them on a learning management system, uh, which we call the eLearn base. Um, this is available to all customers. It's it comes free with any any courses and what it would do is is it allows any large organization to keep a track on the progress of any candidates training uh, 
you know, to make sure that they have started the training or their progress or whether they've completed uh, the training, how many courses might be available. And it allows uh, each individual company to allocate training to their to their members of staff. Uh, we, as mentioned earlier, we work with a, a very large number of the largest shipping lines. And what they do is, is they use their training to train pretty much all of their staff. Um, CMA, CGM have 100,000 staff worldwide, uh, which are, have access to uh, this training system. So we can supply very large numbers um, of, of, of candidates. And that's just one example um, of, of who we supply. So, um, so there is um, the possibility to train large numbers of people with this uh, learning platform. And it's very consistent, as I mentioned. So we we supply our training with uh, in compliance with all of the sort of major uh, organisations uh, organisations I think you're probably quite familiar with uh, TT Club, uh, Badge GP, um, and our uh, courses are endorsed by the one of the largest certificating bodies in the world, uh, Net Norsk Beritask uh, uh, DNV, um, which. Um, which obviously uh, they they endorse our our training, so uh, very uh, crucial endorsement. And we work with a number of uh, competent authorities worldwide. We were the first uh, courses to be endorsed by the Port of Antwerp uh, uh, as e-learning. Uh, we work with the Port of Singapore uh, to produce courses where previously they've only allowed uh, examination access. Um, and a number of different competent authorities worldwide. So again, you know, the courses are pretty uh, well received worldwide. Uh, we um, we do supply a lot of customers. Hopefully there's some here that you that you recognize. Um, they a lot of them have integrated it into their own systems. Uh, we, we do encourage training in as many staff as possible. Uh, as mentioned earlier, we, we don't really want cost to be a barrier to learning. Um, I've spoke about and Sashi has mentioned that um, there is a large number of uh, free resources out there and I'd suggest that people try and access those free resources. Uh, one, of we, uh, one of the small ways that we might be able to help uh, you guys uh, today is uh, we, we I mentioned earlier the CTU code uh, training course. And um, I'm going to uh, post an offer in the chat uh, very shortly um, for a 50% reduction in our CTU code introduction course, um, which is uh, which is available to you guys until the end of the year. Um, so there will be a discount code and a, and a web link uh, for you guys to, to take a look at and see whether that's something that you can take away and, and use from, from this session. And if anybody's got any sort of questions about that, um, you know, then just feel free to come back to me. Sashi's got my contact details. Just one last thing uh, to share here. Uh, and again, I would encourage people to take a look at something that Sashi hasn't mentioned yet. Um, but in July 2020, our parent company NCB released a white paper, um, which is a, a comprehensive holistic approach to enhance safety. In, in that white paper, it had 12 recommendations uh, and described education as a crucial part of safe handling of dangerous goods cargo. The document sets out to encourage uh, an, an establishment of a culture of dangerous goods compliance, uh, DG uh, departments and compliant training programs. Uh, and there's a lot of information in there about their inspection work, uh, some of the results of their inspections, uh, some of the consequences of bad uh, stowage and the misdeclared and undeclared dangerous goods. So I would encourage anybody who hasn't read that to to take a look at it. Um, and uh, we can supply a link to that uh, after this uh, session as well. Thanks for listening and I hope that you found that useful. Thanks, Chris, uh, uh, for uh, sharing this uh, information uh, of the availability of uh, all these uh, digital solutions and e-learnings. Um, as we uh, mentioned above, uh, all attendees, thank you for joining us. Uh, we will be uh, sending out a conclusion email to all of you individually. 
uh, wherein uh, we will include all the download links for all freely available uh, uh, materials, reference guides, checklists, checklist, etc., including what just Chris mentioned about the white paper published by National Cargo Bureau, um, the NCB. Uh, Chris has just shared the discount code uh, in the chat for uh, CTU pack uh, courses. Uh, I will share that also to all of you individually by email. Uh, discount will be uh, available uh, till the year end uh, registration. Uh, I will be sending out the email to all of you individually. Uh, you can just have a look at the chat uh, in case if you are not looking at it. Chris has shared uh, the link for the white paper published by NCB also. Uh, that's it from my side. Anybody having any question, you can uh, punch in, in the chat. Uh, myself and Chris is available for a while uh, in case if you have any question. Thank you. Okay, uh, thanks, uh, Chris. Uh, I think uh, that's it. Uh, uh, I believe uh, others are not having any specific questions now. Uh, Chris, I have uh, requested you to unmute. Uh, if you have anything to uh, say, Chris, you, uh, conclusion message, you may please speak. Yeah, just I would just say, Sashi, that um, if you do get any feedback, uh, if there is any questions, um, I'm more than happy to to help. As as you know, I'm available. So um, if you do hear anything, if there is any any more links that are required, um, any anybody is looking for anything um, sort of on the on the free resource side, um, it's always useful to get that kind of information and that feedback. Um, I do know that cost is important, um, but we want to try and take that away. Uh, you're working really hard to do that as well. Uh, so um, yeah, just uh, basically keep us uh, give give drop us a line. Keep in touch yes. and we're happy to help. Chris, I will uh, keep you posted on all these developments. Anybody asking any anything which is related to the solutions you are providing, I will guide them to you. Perfect. Thanks, Chris, and thanks everyone for joining in. Uh, I believe uh, some of the, not some, many registrants could not join. We have some 150 plus registrants. I'll be anyway, uh, you know, sharing the recording of the session to all to watch it later in case somebody has missed. Thank you everyone. Thank you Chris for joining from UK. Take care, stay safe. Everyone have a nice weekend and uh, wish you a very happy new year. I hope the next year will be much better. Not like this pandemic new year of two, pandemic year of 2020. Believe with the vaccines, the world, world will be again rising up. Thank you everyone. Stay safe. All the best to you, Sashi. Yeah. Bye. Bye.